trash can over there. <clears throat> <laughs> What's good, real ones? It's Levon. Welcome back. And I'm here to drop another gem on y'all today. Did y'all miss this face? <sighs> you know, like... <laughs> it's crazy. I'm sure y'all can relate to this a little bit. It's crazy how... And, and I've spoken this several times, I feel like, on my channel. But, you know what I'm saying? Just thrusting yourself into, into a little bit of action, how... How it just becomes so obvious, like how, how much of that burden and that weight was just all in your in your mind, in your mental. You know what I'm saying? All the dread about starting the thing, or the the overwhelming feeling that you that you have when you just know there's a lot of tasks to do, and that that keeps you in that that paralysis of analysis, that paralysis of initiation. You know what I'm saying? It's just crazy how just cutting on the freaking the camera, just setting it up and hitting the record button, how things just start, how things just start flowing, you know? I say to say, I speak on this stuff, I speak on this stuff, but not but because I experience it. Um, been just thinking about, man, get, gotta get back on, gotta make a video for like the past week. <laughs> oh man, um... But we're here now, and that's all that really matters, okay? One, one step at a time. Uh, I would play it, but my keyboard's in my room right now. I took it outside the other day last week at some point, and I was just, I was just jamming, just doing my thing, you know what I'm saying? The weather was really nice, and I just couldn't pass the opportunity. Plus, I was trying not to be distracted by everything that I have inside of here. Anyways, I digress. Um, just gotta get back into the flow of things, you know what I'm saying? Just get, get the mind, the mind going, the mouth, the mouth moving. Today, I want to talk to y'all about conversation. How to be a cop, how to be a conversationalist. Oh God, it's not, I'm not the one to be speaking on this topic. <laughs> and how to become a better conversationalist. And why am I qualified? Why do I think, you know, I can speak on this topic? Because throughout my life, I've gotten a lot of compliment, compliments, um, many compliments on my communication skills and uh, just how I interact and, and talk with people. Um, that's something that's come back to me several times when, you know, people just talk to me about, you know, their experience t speaking with me and you know, how they see how I engage with others. Um, many things like that have come up over the years. So I want to give you guys like maybe five or so things that I was going to write a list, but I didn't write a list. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going with what's working for me right now in this moment. Okay, don't judge me. Um, I'm going to give you guys about five tips to becoming a better conversationalist. Tip number one. Let's get right into it. All right. Um, tip number one, to be a great, to become a better conversationalist is to listen more, listen more, listen more, speak less. Yo, it's crazy. Like, when you think of conversation, it seems like a, a back and forth, you know what I'm saying? One person says something, the other person says something. That's how, you know, a conversation should go. There should be a flow to it, you know what I'm saying? An exchange. However, there have been several times where I've had conversations and I'll allow the other person to do the majority of the talking and they've left those conversations feeling like, yo, that, that was a great talk, you know what I'm saying? Um, or even just like, thanks for listening. You know, that's such a, it, listening, being an attentive listener is such an important aspect of having a great conversation, you know what I'm saying? Because, because it shows that you are 
invested in and not only that because what the norm is from my experience my anecdotal experience it seems as though the norm is for people to be over eager to to share their experience or to talk about themselves or give their perspective or just talk you know that's what that's what's the most common from what i've noticed um so if you're able to shut up and, and listen more in conversations, that's something that isn't the norm, you know what I'm saying? So you're bringing an element that um, people don't typically experience in their day-to-day -day conversations to that. And just being different from what's normal is going to draw people in more, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And also, people just really like to talk about themselves. Did I say that? I feel like I said that, but it's it's so true. <laughs> um. So yeah, my my first tip would be listen more, and I think some of these might tie into each other, so I might come back to this in some of my my later points. Number two, um, is being to be invested in the other person. Um. And yeah, I, I, I feel like this kind of ties into listening more. Uh, when you allow someone to speak, when you allow somebody to share their story or their perspective, whatever it is, um, it kind of shows that you're invested. But to go a step further um, to so that the person that you're speaking with has has tangible, not tangible, but has you know, evidence that's based in reality that you are listening and being attentive to them. What I like to do is, you know, they, they ramble on for a bit, they speak and, and whatnot. I like to reiterate certain points that they said, um, kind of in my own words a bit, or if I'm going to pose a question after, you know, based off things that they said um it'll be very intentional like picking specific talking points that they gave and i'll frame my question or my my reiteration or my um my summary off you know some of those talking points that really stood out to me that that resonate with me that i feel are very interesting to either me or that were the most significant to that person. You know what I'm saying? So that's a great way to let the person that you're speaking with know that you were actually engaged and there and present with them and your mind's not somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? Or that you're not just waiting to, to say your your next thing, which is another point that I kind of want this this kind of falls into listening more too really the listening more when people speak has so much to do with it honestly um but maybe this is like two and a half two three whatever um is to yes just speak less you know um Maybe not really speak less, because like I was saying, like a conversation, a healthy conversation has a flow to it. So if you're speaking less, like, I don't know if that's really what I'm trying to say, but I'll, I'll just articulate it better. So the point I'm trying to make is to not be so eager to, to throw your ideas out there. Like, hear what the person has to say before you try to step in and, and give your two cents. Like, hear them thoroughly. And if you don't have a full understanding of what they say, don't just come in with with your, your retort immediately, you know what I'm saying? Ask questions. Maybe that'll be point four. I don't know, I'm, I'm jumping all over the place, but these are all great tips, okay? <laughs> Ask questions, clarify the meaning of what they said. If there's something being said um, like, I should give an example. An example would be good. Um, if there's something being said, like, uh, I, I don't know, I really don't like animals. So I'm like, 
okay i could respond and be like oh so you're an animal hater i mean it doesn't have to be negative um like oh yeah i don't like animals at all myself um i think a better thing to do and what i like to do is just this is such a goofy example but whatever <laughs> okay <laughs> i'm speaking to myself um i would clarify like okay is it like, what do you mean by that? You mean domestic animals, like cats, dogs? Is it just, like, certain pets, you know what I'm saying, that you don't like? Or is it just animals in general? You know what I'm saying? Because there's multiple ways that that statement can be interpreted. So ask questions first before you give your response, you know? Make the person engage more and, and stimulate thought for them on what it is that they actually mean. Because sometimes people just say blanket statements and... You know, there they may be something that's more nuanced to what they're trying to say, but they just didn't articulate it well enough the first time. So just asking more questions. Point four, ask more questions. You know what I'm saying? Don't make it about you. Ask questions um, to really understand and to get the person to try to think more about why it is or what it is that they're saying, what it is that they believe, what it is that they're trying to convey in a in the clearest way possible. Um, I think that's another thing that makes the person you're speaking with feel like you are engaged, that you're curious, that you want to know more, you know what I'm saying, about what it is that, you, that they are saying. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a key way to do that. It, my my outlook on conversations really is and this isn't a, a cognizant goal it's just part of just how i guess i just a natural thing that i've adopted you know what i'm saying um it's not a cognizant thought that i have every time but my my ultimate goal in conversation is or one of the foundations when i'm talking with people is to it's to number one make them feel seen and heard okay number two i i go to every conversation with the mindset that like okay if i was talking if i was this person talking to me how would i want them to respond <laughs> is that is that right if i was if i was that person I'm, I'm putting myself in their shoes if i was talking to me how would i want myself to respond you know what i'm saying that's pretty much my ultimate thought when i'm having conversation is it's kind of like the golden rule doing to others how, how you would have them doing to you so i know if i'm if i was a person that said okay yeah i don't like animals or whatever like i would want somebody to inquire like oh what what do you mean by that i would want to get more in depth into my thoughts and and uh you know what's really at the root of that statement that's what i would want for personally in conversation so i try to bring how i would want somebody to talk to me to other people i know if i'm speaking to somebody um, I would want my points to be heard. I would like to be listened to too as well, um, which happens more these days than I feel like you used to. But um, yeah, uh, so I try to bring that to people, what how I, I would like to be spoken to. And it, and it varies in conversation, like what lane or what path I'll decide to go down, you know what I'm saying, based off um just the dynamics of of the conversation what i feel would be most necessary for me if i was that person that was you know that i'm speaking to if that all makes sense to you you know um so yeah four was to um yeah ask ask more question and and somebody uh recently one of my friends he was saying you know he was uh kind of what brought me to the thought of speaking on this topic 
was uh, he, he gave me a great compliment on my um, my ability to speak with people. I was talking to another mutual friend and he was in the area and he would he just picked up on how engaged I was. And, and I was asked one thing he highlighted to me that I never really thought of, um, but I found to be true is he he pointed out how when I ask people questions, I'm asking to understand. He was saying that, you know, I make them, I have the ability to make them feel as though like what they're saying is important, even if they don't feel that themselves. Because if I'm asking a question, it's, I'm not only asking to get them to think more, but I'm, I'm going to ask a question that's going to be beneficial for me. I'm not asking frivolous questions just to ask them. Like I, I want to ask something that gets them to think more, but also is going to be beneficial for me. You know what I'm saying? Um, I want to get some kind of information that you've, that you've garnished, garnished, what, uh, gathered, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, I want to pick your brain so I can apply whatever skills or, or you know, uh, thoughts that you may have implemented. Like, I want to be able to apply that to my life. So I'm asking questions in a way that's going to give me more information. That's going to be useful to me, too. So it's kind of selfish in a way. You know what I'm saying? You can see it like that. But I feel like that's kind of the foundation of where some of my, my questions come from when I'm asking them. Um, number five, and this, this falls into questions as well. Um, don't ask, I like to ask open-ended questions too. And, and notice most of these points are really, all these points that I'm, I'm given are about the other person. And you'll find once you implement this stuff, it'll be reciprocated back to you. You know, well, not always, but oftentimes, you know, if if you are being there for the person and and they're they're feeling that that openness that that you are there for them in that moment, um, they'll want they'll naturally want to reciprocate that and then ask you some engaging questions. Sometimes it happens, sometimes not, but it's not about it's not about you and the conversation. It's about the the mutual exchange. So if the person needs that, if you've seen that they need that provide that for them why not you know what i'm saying it don't hurt it doesn't have to be about you all the time um what was i saying point five was to what i say it was <laughs> engaging questions dang yo i've been sitting here for like a minute i really forgot my point i should just stop the recording and look but i don't want to do all that <laughs> Yeah, I gotta stop it. I forgot where I was at. <laughs> uh, wow. So, um, first off, I don't see how y'all could just sit there and just watch it or stand there, whatever you're doing, lay there and watch me struggle trying to figure out what point five was when you could have just told me it was open ended questions. Like, bro, y'all have me doing the freaking most, but thank you because I realized that my mic wasn't plugged in this whole time, so maybe the audio sounds a bit different. Anyways, number five, um, and I'm going to make this my last point, even though there's, I mean, I feel like y'all get the gist of it, though. You know what I'm saying? Make it about the other person, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, uh, number five, and number five <laughs> is to ask open-ended questions. So instead of asking yes or no questions, ask Okay, so boom, let's say somebody's coming back from, I don't know, a, a relative just came back from vacation and, you know, a typical question that I could ask is, hey, did you enjoy your trip? That's that's ass. That's a whack question. That's typical. You know what I'm saying? That's boring. It's a yes or no answer question. Okay, obviously they did. They just came back from vacation. Try to get beyond, you know what I'm saying, the typical stuff and be more intentional like ask a question in the way that's gonna get them to think so I, I may be like instead of saying that something that might get to a similar answer but allows 
for a more engaging conversation is okay uh what was the highlight of your vacation you know that's a simple little switch that doesn't allow a yes or no answer where they'll have to think back put themselves back in that moment like hmm dang what was great about that for me you know what i'm saying they get to relive it that's going to bring out more animation or just more engagement more feeling because they're putting themselves back in that environment they have to think back to it you know um and i like to ask a lot of feeling questions too so like you know, why was that? Why was that the highlight for you? Like, what about the experience, you know, stood out to you more than like the other stuff or whatever? You know, uh, just questions like like that, that are just more engaging. Uh, I just like that stuff. Um, man, there's there's so many more I can get into, but I need to go do some grocery shopping like now. And I got to head out. Uh, so I would just rattle off a, a few that come to mind. Um one like be willing to challenge people in, in conversations don't be so agreeable all the time if you have an opinion that goes against the person that you're speaking to like state that opinion you know what i'm saying even that that you know that that disagreement can allow for engaging conversation i feel i've experienced i know to be true um yep there's my one that i'm gonna rattle off <laughs> For now, man. Uh, oh, and lastly, guys. Yeah, I got a whole different fit on. Got my hair redid. Man, it's been like a week since I shot that video. Honestly, just never got it uploaded. Better late than never. Lastly, I wanted to say that. So the, the points that I gave in this video, I think they're a good starting point for most people. Just because I think a lot of people that I've talked to, at least, um, and from my experience, have missed the mark on you know, making it about the other person. Everybody just wants to talk about themselves. However, I will say this, um, think of it more so like as a spectrum, you know what I'm saying? So for the people that typically do these tips, like naturally, um, you may need to incorporate more, you know, personal stuff, like speak about yourself more, be more vocal in order to have a more engaging conversation. Because... You know, I used to be hard, hard leaning on the other person focused side of the spectrum, right? And I didn't really realize until I, I talked to somebody that was also on that end of the spectrum. So we were kind of both like throwing, trying to put the conversation on the other person. He was more so even farther than me. So I was doing more talking. So he would ask me a lot of questions about myself and I would like answer, give an engaging response and try to flip it back to them. And you know, he would literally just like bounce it back to me. So <laughs> these are tips for the general population, I believe. However, you know, just be mindful of where you are and how you engage in conversation. Because if you're either the person that just talks all the time and doesn't let anybody else speak, that's, there's no flow there. Or if you're on the opposite end, more so where I was, and it's all about the other person and you know, you're not getting to know anything about the person that you are speaking to, then the conversation doesn't flow. So I say that to say these are just general tips for most people, but be mindful of where you are. Think about it. Take a second. Ding, dun, dun, dun. Tornado alarm. Peace out, y'all. Thanks for joining you guys. It feels so good to just get another video in the books, you know what I'm saying? Posted, uploaded on the channel. It's just... It just warms my, my little soul, okay? Y'all have a good one, and I'm going to see you in the next one. Deuces.